This is the last in my series of one man de expeditions in the Pacific. In this episode, I discuss the antennas I've used and still use in many of my de expeditions. Now, this will be interesting. So, pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee, let's talk about antennas, shall we? My name is Rory, Z01BQD, welcome. In my previous videos on One Man D Expeditions, we discussed uh, the licensing requirements, how do you actually get a license, uh, some of the logistics required for a One Man D Expedition, along with choices of radios and other equipment. In this video, I want to discuss various antennas, which seem to work well on my D Expeditions. <laughs> now there are about as many antennas out there as there are uh, ham radio operators, isn't there? So which one is best? Well, again, just like our discussion on rigs in my last video, there's probably no right or wrong answer, but there are definitely some very good choices that you can make. And those are some of the things that I want to discuss in this video. It's fairly obvious that trying to take uh, stacked monoband antennas <laughs> on every band with you is clearly impractical. But then again, random bits of wire are probably not uh, a good idea either. So what are some of the practical solutions that are out there that will help us with uh, our antenna problem? One of the very distinct advantages we generally have in the Pacific Islands are the uh, prolific number of tall coconut trees that uh, make perfect towers <laughs> uh, to hang antennas from. The coconut trees are ideal to hang up, uh, say, flat top dipoles or an inverted V type uh, antennas. Just find a young lad in the, in the village who is willing to climb the trees and hang the antennas for you. I quite often use uh, wire an uh, antennas uh, configured as a delta loop, uh, especially for 40 or 80 metres. Uh, if you can find a good high coconut tree, uh, it's really, really good. Now bear in mind that weight is always a consideration, so the amount of wire you can carry is somewhat limited. Incidentally, coax is always heavy, so 100 metres of, say, LMNR 4 and, uh, 400 is probably out of the question. Whereas, say, 30 metres of uh, RG8X is uh, manageable. Yeah, I know, RG8X, but it's fine for what we want to do here. So, back to antennas. Vertical antennas are a very real consideration. Especially under current uh, propagation conditions where 40 metres and 80 metres work uh, yeah, relatively well. And there are a number of uh, verticals out there in the marketplace. Yeah, some good, some bad, many just plain indifferent. Now I have no hesitation at all in recommending the DX Commander Expedition model. It's been specifically developed for the expeditions. Uh, POTA, uh, SOTA uh, work, but works equally as well for a home station vertical, giving exceptional results. Though the DX Commander Classic is superb for a home uh, uh, station setup for sure. Now, one of the best things about the DX Commander Expedition is that it packs down into a regular suitcase, uh, very neatly indeed. And this eliminates the need for yet another package to carry along with your suitcases and backpack you already have with you. Now, I need to add a disclaimer here, in that I have uh, I have no financial interest uh, in DX Commander, neither am I being paid to endorse their products. They just work exceptionally well, and in, and in, in my opinion, can't be beaten for their price point. Now, while we're still talking verticals, ground conductivity in most of the islands is very poor, 
So decent radial mat is essential if you're going to uh, run verticals. Verticals of any sort. In many of the locations I operate from, a, a ground stake is not really adequate. The soil is just too sandy, really, for a good ground stake to be effective uh, on its own. Now, I take a set of radials suitable for the DX Commander Expedition with me, but then I'll look around and uh, I'll add any bits of wire that I can find uh, locally if necessary. Now, I'm often asked about the low band 160 metres, and it can be a real challenge, but I usually either use a, an inverted L or some sort of N-fed arrangement of some sort. Uh, the coconut trees are ideal for the inverted L configuration, so that's what I use mainly uh, on low band. I've only 150 watts maximum, so all the heavy lifting really has to be done at the receive end. So if you've got a good receive setup, you're quite likely to get me from uh, some exotic location on 160 metres. All I say is, give it a go. Well, that just about wraps up uh, this series on One Man D Expeditions uh, into the Pacific. I hope you've enjoyed these videos and maybe they will inspire you to give it a go sometime. Now I'm working on another series of videos where I go on a road trip around New Zealand and I talk to hams that I meet on the way. Let's find out uh, their interests in the hobby and how they got into the ham radio in the first place. Hopefully there'll be some uh, big guns in the mix as well as uh, just the normal guys uh, that no one has ever heard of. Let's see what they're up to. What they enjoy about ham radio. Now if you subscribe uh, below and ring the little bell I can let you know when this series is ready to go and you can be one of the first to know. So until then Bye for now.